Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. I received a piece of wood in our club's wood exchange. And I looked at it and said, oh, that's got to be fantastic burrow, but it's kind of on the small side. So, if I put this in the normal mode, I will blow most of that wood off in just getting it into a tenon and getting it out and such. So, I decided to take an alternate approach to turning this bowl. So, no scroll chucks, no tenons. It wasn't exactly easy, but still, the burrow figure on this cottonwood bowl is just fantastic and well worth it. So, let's turn this burrow into this cottonwood bowl. I received this small cottonwood burrow from my club wood exchange. It looks like I should be able to turn a small bowl from it. However, there is no wood to waste for a tenon. I need to maximize the available wood, taking off as little beyond the bark as possible. This is where the burl figure will be at its best. So with hot melt glue, I have fastened the burl to a small wood faceplate. The Life Center provides insurance for as long as possible. This early turning is also when I'm often taking rough cuts. Almost like turning a bowl, I work down the exterior from the bottom and up. While the burl figure is wild, this is still my best bet for cutting into side grain. There is a big void on the side. I decide to leave it and not cut it out. That would make this a very small bowl. Usually I would be cutting a tenon. Instead, I am going for finish cuts, a minimal foot, and a cove bottom. I can scrape a little using my skew as a scraper, then sand the exterior through all the grits. Since I do not have a dovetail tenon to mount to a scroll chuck, I will do something very different. I am hollowing another faceplate to approximately fit the bottom of the bowl. Then cover the bowl exterior with masking tape and hot melt it into this somewhat of a jam chuck. What makes this work is that the bowl is already on its own faceplate that can be mounted to the live center. This keeps the axis aligned better than any other way I have seen. Hopefully the tape will hold everything secure while still be easy to remove later. However, everything is still stuck together. I do not mind cutting into these faceplates. When they get too thin, I simply glue on another layer. After cleaning the bottom edge, which will be the rim, I can start cutting into hot melt glue and the faceplate and the bowl. Technically, I should focus on cutting into the bowl center waste area. Instead, I would rather cut into the faceplate and save the bowl wood for later. With the faceplate gone, using my large bowl gouge, I cut out some of the interior wood, but I do not know how far to go. So I stop, take off the faceplate, and measure the bowl wall thickness. Fortunately, there is a hollow for the spindle threads that goes entirely through the faceplate. My measuring gauge cannot work in this small hole. So I cut a short piece of dowel to go into the spindle hole, measured it, then put the same piece of dowel into the gauge to see the net measure. And it worked. Not knowing how far to go, I hollow more with the bowl gouge before switching to a round nose scraper. I am still wary of going too far. To stabilize my scraper more, I'm using a stabilizer from Ron Brown's Best that he asked me to try. It does give me more control over the scraper in these tight quarters. Then sand.
Now for the tricky part. The bowl is finished, but still attached to the waste block. With a spindle gouge, parting tool, and tight knuckles, I cut back the glue and faceplate. At times, I try to run the spindle's bevel on the masking tape. In the end, rather than trying to keep the faceplate wood intact, I decide to waste some of it away. I'm done. Then peel off the tape, remaining glue, and thin wood pieces. Finally, a bath in walnut oil brings out the burl figure and the color of the wood. Fantastic! That void in the side survived with just a little thin piece at the rim, but very fragile. Still, this is a beautiful small bowl. I like the wild burl figure. This is not a standard way to turn a bowl, but it worked. What would you have done? Please give this video a thumbs up, and it is best to subscribe via my website. Also, tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. It could save your life.